In the Big Bang model, the universe started in a fiery bang, and since then the universe has expanded and formed all the structures we see. Slowly, over time, it is thought that this material should cool down. Gravity will still act on the particles, but we would expect to find the hottest galaxies early on. A new study published recently turns this idea on its head, and shows that in fact the opposite is happening. Let's explore what is going on. A new study reveals that the universe did indeed cool off for the first 3 billion years, but over the last 10 billion years, the galaxies of the universe have actually been heating up. Researchers from John Hopkins University looked back at two decades worth of data from the Sloan Digital Sky Survey and the ESA's Planck mission, and were able to measure the temperature of galaxies in the universe. They discovered that the average temperature of the galaxy clusters today is about 2 billion degrees Celsius, and that over the last 10 billion years, the average temperature has increased about tenfold. The scientists speculate that the heat gain is the result of gases being pulled into the galaxies by gravity. In order to make this discovery, the scientists had to develop a new technique which would allow them to estimate the redshift of gas concentrations in microwave images. From this, they were able to see that gas concentrations were increasing over time and adding heat to the galaxies. Now, I think there are a number of aspects that are worth considering in this paper. The first point to consider is how they determine where an object is. They used redshift and identified that galaxies with high redshift seem to have lower concentration of gas and hence heat compared to galaxies with low redshift. If redshift only correlates to distance, and hence age, then you would indeed infer that older galaxies seem to have less gas than newer galaxies. If for a moment we consider that the redshift of objects could change as they age, as we discussed in the ARPS evidence series, then we need to look at this data in a slightly different way. Objects with the same redshift are not necessarily at the same distance. If we look at ARP's evidence, then there is indeed a correlation between objects emitted out of galaxies which have a higher redshift, and over time, these grow and the redshift reduces. And this is exactly what this data is showing. We see that material is ejected out of galaxies, and ARP was able to catalogue many examples showing how quasars and dwarf galaxies all seem to lie along these ejection lines, he also showed that the redshift of these objects falls with distance from the host galaxy. We then even see examples of these dwarf galaxies growing and ejecting their own material, starting the process all over again. It is still very much open to debate how this process of ejection might occur and how these objects can actually grow. There is some evidence that shows that there is a connection between the ejected objects and the host galaxies which could potentially provide a pathway for additional material to flow towards the object. If galaxies are connected via intergalactic Birkeland currents, then it may be possible that this feeds material into the core of the galaxy, which allows for the initial ejection and possibly a tether back to the core. If we accept the basic premise that they do indeed evolve from a host galaxy, then it stands to reason that they will gain additional material as they evolve. We would therefore expect to see additional gas components as it evolves, and at the same time the redshift would slowly be decreasing. So this study may not be showing that galaxies are heating up, but rather that older galaxies contain more matter, and are therefore hotter compared to the younger ones, which are less evolved but have a higher redshift, and are therefore hotter compared to younger, less evolved, more redshifted galaxies. If we look at Wal Thornhill's concept, then young quasars will be born as electron deficient with high redshift. Over time, they gain more and more electrons, and the redshift falls. Again, this potentially fits with the data from this paper. Another way to look at this is in terms of plasma redshift. Here, higher electron density causes a higher degree of redshift. If the charge segregation is caused by a strong electric field, this could cause electric dethermalization, meaning we would detect a lower temperature. As the objects age and move further away, 
If the electric field becomes less intense, it would mean that there is less segregation of ions and electrons, and also less dethermalization, making it appear as if it's hotter. Now, this last example does remind me that we need to be cautious in asserting that galaxies are getting hotter. The assumed temperature is taken from the electrons, but there need not necessarily be a difference between their speeds. The difference is in their motion. As they become more dethermalized, their random motions stop and they will tend to move in parallel lines, meaning less collisions. So is it possible when we examine these galaxies, what we are seeing is the evolution of the galaxy from a scenario of a high electric field and high order to a later one where it has a much lower electric field and hence less order. Is this what this data is showing us? As always, be brave, be curious, the truth is waiting for us. Until next time.